So welcome back to the video series on creating a chat GPT app in Flutterflow. In this particular episode, we're gonna focus our attention on making a few little minor UI tweaks to get our UI ready to support the content that's gonna come back from the chat GPT application. We're also gonna have a quick look at the custom code and the custom actions that's with inside the application to get you familiar with it. And then we're gonna start setting up our actions that will actually then invoke the chat GPT service. So without further ado, let's get cracking. Back in. So welcome back to Flutterflow. Um, I've just spotted actually at the start of this video that um, there may actually be a bug in Flutterflow itself because every time I'm applying some themed styling, I'm actually getting the um, the actual visibility rules are being applied to the actual widgets themselves. So um, we just need to turn those off every time that we do that. Of course, and at the time that you're probably watching this video, they may have actually resolved that particular problem. So as you can see here, the container message here at the bottom here, when we apply the theme styling, we've got this um, visibility uh, kind of condition that's being applied. So we just need to make sure that we turn that off. So I'm just gonna go up here and turn that off. And similarly, actually just within inside this container, the icon button is, has also got that conditional visibility applied. So we just need to make sure that we, we turn that off. So I'll keep an eye on that. Um, but of course, if that happens to you, then please just, uh, just turn that off as you, as you progress. So we now need to prepare our application for the logic that we're going to apply to it in this particular video. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some application state and the application state needs to contain a couple of different things. So let's move over now to the application state option, which is just this option just here on the left hand side. Just choose that. And the first piece of state that we can actually add is an API key. So just type in API with an uppercase K for key. And it's just going to be a string. Um, and of course, it will be persisted with inside the application. So this is the variable that will hold our application key for the OpenAI platform. So just hit create. And then next up, we need to in include also a couple of other additional pieces here. So we're going to create another state variable. And we're just going to call this one is dark mode. And uh, we'll come back to that a little bit later. And this is just going to be of Boolean va value. And we're just going to set this as persisted. And we're just going to say create. And then the next piece of state we're going to create is to hold a list of our chat history. So this field is going to be called current conversation and the type of the data type is going to be a JSON. It's going to be a list and it doesn't really need to remain persisted at all. So this particular variable is going to contain the chat history. So as we are applying a conversation, we're going to be storing it in here. And then as we add more and more and more, we're going to keep updating this particular variable with additional content from the conversation. So just hit create. And then there are all of our state variables that we need to create with inside the application state of the application. So now we're ready to set up our API key in order for our application to then call the chat GPT service. Of course, if you already have your API key, you can skip this particular section. But if you haven't, let me show you how to set up a free account. So just head over to the link in the description. It will take you somewhere like this particular screen here. Just hit the sign up option, but I'm going to sign into the account that I've already created. So you just go ahead and sign up to your account. So here I am at the dashboard. Your dashboard looks, should look something very, very similar to this. If you just go up to the top right here and go to manage account this will take you into your account management screen as you can see here this is got a free trial and my usage is absolutely zero so I've got nothing in this particular account now I'm not using this particular account for my training um, I've actually got another account that has a, a card registered and of course that's better that's there for paid for um, what you're going to need to do though of course is you are going to have to go over to the billing section and you're going to have to set up a paid account you just hit that you just say hi I'm an individual and of course at this point you can then start entering, entering in your details to register your card now just 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 a word of caution here of course um, whenever you set up any kind of payment methods um, like this there will be a small charge that will be made to your account when you're using the chat GPT service at this current time in in April 2023 the charges are very very low for the the chat GPT model that we're going to actually be using so all I ask you to do is just keep checking your usage meter on the left hand side here when you're using the application just so then you're comfortable with the charges that are being made or will be then billed to 
your card but it should be very very low and what we're going to be doing in our application is going to be almost like the, the cost of cents um, or, pe or pennies more than anything and not pounds or anything more than that but just keep an eye on it that's just a, just a word of advice there so once you've done that you should be up and running and then what you then need to do is you need to go up to the personal option again and go to view API keys and what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to generate a new secret so you're just going to hit this option here and then of course that's then going to generate you this particular key and it's this particular key that you're going to want to copy into your clipboard keep it handy and keep it local because you're going to need to use this again once you hit okay here you're not going to be able to see that key again so just keep keep that to one side and then we're going to then move that with inside the application in the next section so we're back over on Flutterflow now and we're just in the app state section on the left hand side. So we're just going to bring that API key that you may have now into the application. So we're just going to go up to the API key and let's just paste the API key into that section. And that's all that we need to do at this particular moment. And then our code will then pick that up because we'll be passing that API key into our custom function um, or at least our custom action that will then um, make a call into the chat GPT service. So back within the home page of our Flutterflow application, we now need to prepare the UI ready to take receipt of the chat responses. It's going to come back from the uh, OpenAI platform and of course also as well the chat that I'm going to be passing into it myself. So what we need to do is we need to head over to the container current here on the left hand side, click on the actual list view current and then on the right hand side we're going to move over to this option here which is called generate dynamic children. So just choose that and what we're going to do is we're just going to put a variable name in here okay and we're going to call this one chat current so every single row that's going to appear in our list view is going to be uh, the content of that row is going to be bound to the variable called chat current okay and then with inside this particular section here if you just select that and we are going to want to use the app state so the app state variable we created a moment ago we're going to select that now so we're going to choose app state we're going to say a current conversation and we're just going to hit confirm that's all that we need to do. And once we hit confirm here, we're going to get a little message pop up that will tell us that the, the, the children is now going to be uh, dynamically created from the variable. Just hit OK. And of course, what you're going to see now, of course, is something that looks a little bit more realistic in terms of a conversation. But we're not quite done yet, but we certainly got the, the start of where that particular list view is now going to take receipt of the messages that is going to be then pushed into that particular variable at the time that we make those calls into the API. So what we now need to do is we need to tell each of our widgets within inside our list view, we need to bind those to the conversation that's going to occur within inside our chat history. So we know every time we're going to load our chat history up, each of those variables will be part of the conversation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go up to the text field that's just in here and we're just going to move to the this particular option here and we're going to just select that and we are going to select the chat current item. So this is the variable that we just created within inside that list view. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go here and we're going to say JSON path. So we're going to find a location with inside the, the content of that variable and we're going to pull out the content that's going to be in it. And I'll show you more about that later in terms of the message shape that comes back from the chat GPT service. But we just simply need to choose JSON path and here we're just going to select content that's all that we need to do just hit confirm and similarly we need to do the same thing on the right hand side here so we're just going to select that so we're just going to select the uh, text option there we're just going to go chat current item we're going to choose json path and we're just going to say content and just hit confirm so before we get ourselves into the actions of this particular application, which will actually invoke the API call into the chat GPT service, I just want to familiarize you with one of the custom functions that we're going to be calling in that particular uh, action flow. So if you just head over to the uh, custom functions option here on the left hand side, just hit that. And I'm going to get you into this particular area here, the prepare chat history. And on the right here, you'll see a little bit of simplistic code here that's going to uh, going to do something for us. What we're going to do is um, one of the very early parts of the action flow when we actually hit the send button down the bottom, we're going to be calling this particular function. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in some variables, we're going to pass in some information actually into this particular function so the first piece of information we're going to pass in will be the chat history so this is the chat history application state variable that we actually created earlier on we're going to pass that in 
What we're also gonna pass in is the new chat. So this is simply just the piece of text that we're gonna put into the box at the bottom of our application, and we're gonna pass that into this function as well. And basically what it's gonna be doing is, it's gonna be adding that particular new chat value into the chat history list. But what we've got to do is we've got to actually shape up the uh, the content of the new chat that goes actually into the list because what we're going to do is we're going to be using the structure that is going to be more than familiar with the chat GTP service. As you can see here, we've kind of got some text here. We've got role and user and we've got content and then we've actually got the, the actual variable, the actual value that we're actually passing in. So chat GPT expects us to be passing this information in with our new chat every time that we make that call into the chat GPT service. If you were to look at the API documentation of uh, the on the platform API's website where we're using this particular API, you will see this will be very, very familiar. And of course, when we actually then get a response back, the role wouldn't be a user, the role would be the assistant. We'll go through that when we talk about the response that comes back in the next video. But for now, just this is a very, very simple function. I've put a little bit of text here just to explain what it's doing. Um, hopefully that makes sense. And of course, at the very part, at the very end of it, we're going to then be returning that chat history back to ourselves. So we'll, we'll pass the chat history in, we'll make a change, we'll return it back out. And then, of course, we'll then use that to then pass over to the chat GPT service. And of course, later on, we're going to want to save that back into our application state. So I hope that's pretty clear, um, but let's now move on to the action flow editor. So back on the home page of our application, this is where things just get a little bit more exciting now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're now going to apply some actions to this particular button here. So just select that, and then up on the right, up on the right here at the top there, we've got the actions option, and then we're just going to simply add a. Uh, we're going to actually open up the action flow editor. Actually, hit open there, and we're into this empty screen. So this is the on tap action. So when somebody hits that button, this is where we're going to be. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is add a conditional action. In, okay, we want to actually see if there is any content in that text box. We only want to carry out this particular action if somebody's actually keyed something into the box. So a little bit of a check there. So let's add a conditional action in. And at the very top here, we're going to choose the, uh, we're going to go into conditions. We're just going to choose conditions and it's going to be a single condition, nothing too complex. We're just going to check the first value here. We're going to select this and we're going to select the widget state. Okay, so this is the state of that widget that's actually on our page and it's going to be the text prompt that's the only uh, sort of text uh, sort of um, box that we've actually got on the on the screen so just hit text prompt there and we want to say we want to change where it says equal to and we want to say is set and not empty so we're going to only want to go put down a happy path if somebody's actually keyed in that particular value that's all that we need to do so what will happen is, is we'll come in at this particular point and we're just going to head in this particular direction. If if there's nothing's being keyed in, we're just going to end up in this direction. We'll come out at the end of it and nothing's really going to happen. So we're going to head down here. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do now is add another action in. Select the update app state option here. OK, and then just choose add fields. And we are going to set our current conversation so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be calling our custom function and what we're going to do is on the return of that if you remember we've inside our custom function where we're preparing the conversation we're going to return back the chat history so we're going to return back that 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 chat history into this app state okay so we're just going to have that selected we need to select this particular option here and we're going to say update type we're going to set the value okay we're just going to go down here and this is where we're going to want to now uh, call our custom function okay so just move down to the custom functions option here and we want to select this one here where it says prepare chat history and then down here the if you remember that our custom function requires two things it requires the chat history and it requires the chat value that we're going to pass into it okay so we're just going to choose the chat history here select that and we're going to go and choose app state because that's where it's located and we're going to choose a current conversation and just hit confirm that's all that we need to do and then down in the new chat we just need to hit this option just here and we're going to go to the widget state and we're going to choose the text prompt and that by default will just pull out the value that the user has actually keyed into that particular widget that's all that we need to do just hit confirm 
So now we're going to select another one now. So just hit the little plus here and we're going to say add to action. And then this time we're going to choose the custom action, which is just down the bottom here. And we're just going to choose this one called invoke chat GPT. So I'll show you that one in a second in the custom functions, but just assume that this is going to require two things. One is going to be the API key that we set up in our application state. You can just see on the right hand side, it's got set functional uh, arguments here. We want to choose API key. So we're just going to simply select that that we're going to go down to the app state and we're just going to choose API key so that's just simply going to pass that in and then down here we've got then the messages now of course what we've done up here is we've now prepared the chat history so we've got the conversation flowing we are now going to pass that back into this particular function okay so just down here we're just going to choose this option just here and we're going to move down to the um, the application state and we're going to choose the current conversation and we're just going to hit confirm and then on the action output variable we're just going to call this one chat result OK, that's all that we need to do in this particular function. And then, of course, we're now going to want to do something with that chat result when it comes back. So in my next video, I'm going to show you exactly how to handle that when it actually comes back. So for now, let's just have a quick look at this custom action that is actually being evoked here. So just hit close and we're just going to move over to the custom functions here and we're just going to have a look at this invoke chat GPT. So this particular function um, is kind of doing all of the hard work. OK, so this actually this function was actually born and bred from um, a Flutterflow developer. What I've done is I've taken it. I've pretty well much left it completely the same i've just made a slight change though to the way that messages are actually passed in which is more suitable to this particular application in my opinion it kind of very much simplifies um, how our application is actually working so i've made that particular change here and what i've done also as well i've actually commented um, all of the sections with inside this particular custom action just so then you can get familiar with exactly what it's actually doing so hopefully hopefully you will find some of those comments quite useful in just understanding certainly if you're not a coder just to understand it um, is well worth having a look so that's a wrap for this particular episode. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope that was really, really useful to you. Of course, our application isn't really doing anything at this moment in time, but in the next one, that is when we are going to actually make that request. We're going to get those responses back and we're then going to be able to see the chat appear with inside the application. Please do like the video as always. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber and do hit me up there as well on social media as well. It'd be great to, great to, to see you on Twitter. Um, but yeah, until the next one, we'll see you soon.